In the first lecture in Unit 2.2, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of molecular orbitals. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to explain what is meant by a molecular orbital. You should also be able to describe the difference in symmetry between a polar and a non-polar molecular bonding orbital. So, what do we mean by the term molecular orbital? Well, to answer that, I want to go back and just refresh what we mean by the term atomic orbital. And they are slightly confusing terms, because atomic orbital, we're not talking about the orbit of the atom. We're talking, when we talk about the atomic orbital, we're talking about the orbit of the electron within an atom. So, here we see a hydrogen atom and hydrogen's got one electron, it's in a 1s orbital. So the atomic orbital of hydrogen is this 1s orbital. And it, the area of space where you're likely to find the electron orbiting around the helium nucleus. When we talk about molecular orbital, we're talking about the area of space in which you're likely to find the bonding electrons within a molecule. So. If two hydrogen atoms combine to form a hydrogen molecule, okay, both electrons will end up in the bonding molecular orbital. And the shape of the bonding molecular orbital is different from the shape of the atomic orbitals. However, it's a more stable arrangement than the two hydrogen, separate hydrogen atoms and that's why they do combine to form the hydrogen molecule. So, atomic orbital is the area of space where you're likely to find an electron in an atom and molecular orbital is the area of space where you're likely to find the bonding electrons in a molecule. And as I said, the molecular orbital is more stable which means it's got a lower energy than individual atomic orbitals. And if we show that in this energy diagram for hydrogen, okay, so that's one hydrogen atom there, one hydrogen atom there. And this box here represents the lower energy molecular orbital of the H2 molecule. So that was the shape of the atomic orbital for the hydrogen atom. And that's the shape of the molecular orbital for hydrogen, the hydrogen molecule. And it is of lower energy than the atomic orbitals. Now, since uh, the hydrogen molecule is a, forms a pure covalent bond, what we find is that the molecular orbital is symmetrical because the electrons are not attracted to one atom more than the other. So you get a totally symmetrical molecular orbital. If you had a polar covalent bond, for example, as you would in water, the oxygen being more electronegative than the hydrogen, what we find is that the individual molecular orbitals are not symmetrical because the electrons will, form, will spend more time near the oxygen atom than the hydrogen atom. So we've got non-symmetrical uh, molecular orbitals. So when there's a large difference between the electronegativities of the two elements involved in the bond, as we have here, the bonding molecular orbital will be asymmetric. And if you have an ionic, uh, as polar difference in polarity increases and you move towards an ionic substance, it gets even more asymmetric. So really, in this little introduction, that's all we really want you to know. Be quite clear the difference between an atomic orbital and a molecular orbital. So once again, the atomic orbital refers to the area space where you're likely to find an electron in an atom, whereas the molecular orbital, we're referring to the area space where you're likely to find the bonding electron pairs within the molecule. And if it's a pure covalent bond, the molecular orbital will be symmetric. The more polar the bond, the more asymmetric that bond will be. And that's all we really need to know at this stage.
OK, so you should now be able to explain what is meant by the term a molecular orbital. And you should be able to describe the difference in symmetry between a polar and a non-polar molecular bonding orbital.